Hey friends, I want to welcome you to Bible Study Online. This is part of our Spiritual Warfare series, and we're going to focus specifically on spiritual weapons. On Sunday, we talked about how the Apostle Paul was trying to give us a picture of what it looks like to be someone who's fighting this good fight, and Paul was surrounded by the Roman soldiers, and so Paul gives us an, an idea, an analogy to see yourself in the Spirit and the weapons that God has given us to fight the good fight. And on Sunday, we talked about truth being the first weapon that Paul, that Paul talks about, the belt of truth. And today we're going to focus on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is what the soldiers would, would put on to provide protection for the most vital organs if they were to be in, in, in fight. And if someone hits them, hopefully the, war, the, the breastplate is going to protect them uh, from being hit from diff, on the most important parts of the body where they can be could be fatal. And so here, my friends, Paul equates uh, the breastplate with God's righteousness. And the reason why Paul equates the breastplate with God's righteousness is that only God is righteous. So if you're going to fight this fight, you have to understand that you can't fight it on your own righteousness. You have to fight it on God's righteousness. So you have to put on God's breastplate of righteousness. It is God who gives us the right standing to fight against the enemy. If you try to fight the enemy on your own righteousness, you're going to lose every single time because the enemy can outsmart you, can outwit you. And the, the reality is you don't have what it takes to fight him on your own. And that, my friends, is important that we understand that it is God righteousness that gives us the confidence to fight this good fight. To, to, first of all, to let us know who we really are and how we can overcome the enemy. Just like Jesus did when the enemy came against him, he didn't fight him against his own righteousness. He, he, he spoke about God's righteousness. So God's righteousness will keep us away from pride and boasting in our own self. Also, his righteousness is your best defense against the strongholds that comes against your own mind. Because remember, the enemy will twist things around to keep you uh, depressed, to keep you in doom and gloom, to keep you worried, to keep you fearful. So if you turn on your righteousness, you're going to end up depressed, lonely. You're going to feel like you can't overcome. So you have to call upon God's righteousness. For example, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, but let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one who whom the Lord commands. So we boast in God. He's our righteousness. He's the one that provides for us. He's the one that takes care of us. He's the one that's anointed us. He's the one that has equipped us to fight this good fight. And so it's not about how right you are. It's about how right God is in you. And I want to remind you that the opposite of righteousness is self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is one of the things the enemy would love to use against you. The enemy wants you to puff yourself up and to think you're better than others, to think that you are you have arrived and be careful with self-righteousness because we know that uh, the Pharisees were self-righteous because they focused on themselves instead of focusing on God's righteousness. Hypocrisy is the opposite of righteousness. Hypocrisy is when we know what to do, but we don't do it, and we end up living a double life. We have double standards, so we have to be careful because the enemy, again, would love to use hypocrisy against you. Also, beware of legalism, right? Legalism goes with self-righteousness. When we begin to put laws and rules and regulations in how people are supposed to live and how to act, but the reality is we live by faith, right? We live by grace, but we don't live by legality. And so we have to be careful because the enemy, again, will use these things against us. Beware of immorality is another, is opposite of self -right of, of righteousness because the enemy will love for you to start blurring the lines and start, you know, getting into shady things and doing weird things and, and, and get into all kinds of things that God does not co-sign. So beware of immorality. And of course, number five is self-defeat. God doesn't want you to beat yourself up. Remember, the enemy is the accuser of the brothers. And so be careful with self-defeat, self-defeat you know, self talk. Uh, just thinking that 
you can't make it. These are all the things that the enemy will try to bring against you, the, against your vital organs to try to, to, try to uh, annihilate you and to try to keep you from fighting. So beware that these things are the opposite of righteousness. But the good news is, my friends, is that Jesus is our righteousness. Here's how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Again, God's righteousness is found in Jesus. And everyone who is in Jesus then has Jesus' righteousness, holiness and redemption. Those are the things that we cannot do for ourselves. You can't make yourself right, you can't make yourself holy, and you can't redeem yourself. That's why we go to Jesus as our righteousness. And so in order to fight this good fight, you have to put on God's breastplate of righteousness, which means you have to put on Jesus because Jesus is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. It is through Jesus that we are, be, are made right with God. It is through Jesus that we can live an, a righteous and upstanding life. It is through Jesus that we can have integrity, meaning we can be whole, we can be one. We don't have to be uh, one person in church, someone else uh, outside of church. Uh, everywhere we are, we have God's righteousness. In every battle that comes against us, we can be protected from all the things that the enemy is trying to bring against us. So my friends, put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning every day it's about embracing what Jesus has done for us. And it's about uh, going through life with that mindset that Jesus is my righteousness, my holiness, and my redemption. And so every day I start my day with that mindset. I put on the armor of God and I say to God every day, Lord, I want you to be my righteous. This. I want you to empower me. I want you to fill me with grace and goodness so I can go about my day living in your righteousness. And when the enemy comes against me in, in these areas, that I'll be able to say, Jesus is my righteousness. I am in right up standing with God. Why? Because I'm living in the fullness of his will. And if, when I do mess up, I repent and I say, God, once again, I appropriate myself of what Jesus has done for me. My holiness comes from Jesus. My redemption comes from Jesus. So Father, we, we thank you for Jesus and we thank you that through him we are made right. And we pray today, Lord, that we will put on your righteousness as we fight this good fight. And may the power of your Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us, enabling us to fight this good fight and to know that we are right in standing with you because of what Jesus has done for us. We can be righteous and not be so concerned with being right, but also we can have integrity and live in the fullness of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, it is way more important to be righteous than to be right. We want to be in right standing with God.